You're listening to the Dyslexia Mom Podcast. We are excited that you're here today. We are here to provide you with inspiration, education, and lots and lots of support while raising your children with dyslexia. I'm your host, Nicole Holcomb, a mom just like you raising a daughter with dyslexia. And by the way, I also have 20 years of experience as an educator, school counselor, school district administrator, and an attorney. I can't wait to share conversations with you about parenting children with dyslexia. If you want to raise happy, healthy, and successful children while keeping your sanity and enjoying your best life along the way, then you're in the right place. This is the Dyslexia Mom Life Podcast. I want you to imagine it's a Thursday night and you're sitting with your child studying yet again those sight words. Your daughter has a test Friday at school and by the time you finish studying with her, both of you are sitting on the floor in tears. It's been a week of frustration because every night is a struggle with homework. But this week is a little different. It's not an outward, I'm not doing this. It's your daughter acting funny. She's silly. Some nights she's just doing anything to avoid homework. And then there's some nights where she says, I'm just too tired, Mom, to do homework. And then you find the next day, that morning, your daughter complains, my head hurts, my stomach hurts. And you as a mom, you have some real concerns. Uh, It's just making no sense. She's so bright. She's so creative. She's learning math quickly. Her vocabulary is just way beyond her years. Something's going on, you keep thinking. Just something, you can't put your finger on it, but something's just not right. You'd heard about this, this word dyslexia. Maybe you had friends in high school or college that were dyslexic, but you never really knew what it meant other than the reversal of letters is what you had thought. And then you think, well, you know, I'll, I'll ask the teachers, I'll check in, and you're told it's, it's just developmental. These words, these sight words, one day it's just all going to click. Just maybe taking her a little longer, so it's okay, don't worry. But she doesn't. And it doesn't click. And it's a year later. And now you realize your daughter is dyslexic. In this episode, I will share with you what the meaning of the word dyslexia, what does it mean? Let's start there. That seems like the best place for us to start together. Let's talk about what does that mean. You'll find a lot of different definitions out there. The word actually has Greek origins. Dys, D-I, D-I, look, (laughs) no, D-Y-S, dys um, actually means impaired, difficult, or inadequate. And the Greek word lexis, L-E-X-I-S, means language of words or words. So dyslexia is a neurological condition, and it causes a different structure and function in the brain. And I don't know if you know this, we did not, Um, dyslexia is actually genetic. So there is someone in your family that is also dyslexic. And we didn't know who that was. As we learned more about dyslexia, we started learning about the things that made sense to us. But at the beginning, we did not know. So it wasn't on our radar to be watching for that. Some people believe dyslexia is a disease. It is not, but there's no cure for dyslexia. So the best thing we can do is provide some strategies to help our students, our children, learn to read and write uh, and spell. And for some students, it even involves math. Also know, though, that the research indicates that dyslexia has no relationship to intelligence. And I'm sure for you, you can agree with that because many of us see our children doing amazing things although they're struggling to read or maybe to do math as well. And if you look at the research, we'll talk about that later but uh, in another episode, but if you look at all of the people who are known dyslexics, uh, some of the most successful people have been identified as dyslexic, like Walt Disney, for example. As I was doing research, though, I found the Yale Center for Dyslexia and Creativity is one that I went to. I loved their concise and easy to understand definition of dyslexia. So I'm going to read it to you real quickly. They define dyslexia as an unexpected difficulty in learning to read. 
How simple is that, right? An unexpected difficulty in learning to read. We all think about learning being so natural, but it really is not. Dyslexia takes away an individual's ability to read quickly and automatically and to retrieve spoken words easily, but does not damper their creativity and ingenuity. Like I said, one of my favorite definitions of dyslexia. So if you're here, you either already know your child is dyslexic, or you may be thinking, I see some warning signs. I think my child might be dyslexic. We're just struggling. So there are some specific characteristics that you may see at home and at school. And all I can tell you at this point is you should absolutely follow your instinct. Follow your instinct on what you think needs to be done, right? Because it really made all the difference for our daughter who started receiving services in second grade. Had we not followed what was my instinct and get her tested, we probably would just now be figuring this thing out. And she would have lost another year or two of school. Hey, I just wanted to pop in here and tell you about a free resource that we are providing. We have created a resource for you called Summer Activities, bringing the learning and the fun home to you. And if you're like us, we've been home since March. And so it's a long five months from when we left school to when we go back to school. And so... We are looking at our house to have other activities to do at the same time, continue to remediate our dyslexic learner and provide her with reading and math opportunities. And so I have compiled some activities and some resources. Some are paid, some are for free. Some of them are virtual summer camps, but I think that you'll find something in there for you and your family, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So if you will just, after listening to the podcast, you know, look in the podcast information for this episode, and I will have a link there for you where you can jump over and subscribe and get this summer 2020 uh, activities and I know you're going to love it and I know you're going to enjoy it and P.S. you'll get some other freebies along the way too that I plan on sending out so enjoy your summer and now back to the episode. Another great resource that everybody I've talked to recommends is Overcoming Dyslexia by Sally Shaywitz. She's actually released a second edition here about a month ago, so you might want to check that one out. I went ahead and ordered that to have that readily handy. What I love about her book is she covers that dyslexia in four parts in the the first edition, which is she goes through just what is... What is reading? Like, how does it work? Um, She talks about diagnosing dyslexia, helping your child become a better reader. And how do you overcome it? How do you turn struggling readers into proficient readers? So she has a pretty extensive list of characteristics. So I would recommend you grabbing that. I have that uh, link in my show notes as well to that book. But what I love about it is you really can dig in and look at what are the characteristics by age groups. It's hard to give you kind of a, a generic, this is what it looks like, because it could look different depending on if your child is six or your child is 16. It might look very different. So don't forget, if you'd like to get the show notes for this episode, along with the links that we discussed, you will head over to dyslexiamomlife.com backslash episode two. That's the number two. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to the podcast today. I don't want you to miss out on any of our episodes. I'm going to be adding some bonus episodes for you, and I want to make sure that uh, you get those and that you have a chance to not miss out on those. So click and subscribe to where you listen to your podcast. And if you enjoyed the show today, I would appreciate it if you would take just a few minutes and leave a review. This really does help other moms find our show. It's not about what you do that matters. It's how you show up, how you show up for yourself and how you show up for your family. And remember, there's going to be failures along the way. But remember, it's never a failure. It's always a lesson. So go out this week. Find some new lessons, fail hard, fail fast, and learn what works, and better yet, learn what doesn't. Remember, Thomas Edison always said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So, let's go find what works for us, and let's have a great week.